Hey, 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 everybody. Michelle is back. Part two of uh, my video series called The Enemy Within is a Fool Within. Okay, literally, figuratively, and metaphorically. And so I just wanted to come on through and share some things. And I hope, I, I want to get as much as I can out before before January. Okay, about, so that people can realize that they have been puppets and pawns have been used, misused, targeted, and in the whole nine yards. And it started decades ago, but I'm going to stay within my range, my age range. You know, I was born in the 60s, but this happened, I, I would say it happened in the 30s, 40s. You know, it could happen. I mean, it happened decades upon decades upon decades ago. Okay, but it's but we're in the effects of it. Okay, we are in the effects of it. It's cause and effect. So this is part two, the enemy within is a fool within. And what I want to come back and say is, uh, I have sort of a whew, revelation, you know? And I told you sometimes that happens where you just wake up one morning and say, whoa, what just happened? And you know, um, it, it for me, I know how to, as they say, um, cultivate that and contemplate on it and, and music does that for me okay I was avoiding certain sounds and tones for a reason <clears throat> because uh I was being I, I, I you know I'm still am disturbed and bothered and disappointed and sad about our current realities and the revelation of it all you know when you think you know everything boy 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 and that's what I said <clears throat> sorry about that <clears throat> about the intellectual talking it has you know um you, you in our in our age in our age range we have been fed nothing more nothing less than garbage since our birth since the birth of our parents since the birth of our grandparents and it goes on and on and on okay and 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 I said that that the, the the period of time to 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 uh, somewhat figure things out happens in your adolescence, and um, and there's a reason why you know there's this interference with the um, the school system. Okay, there's a, there's a, there's there's a reason for that. Okay, and and why why so many people have such a vested interest in that and prisons. Okay, and so what's like I said? <coughs> sorry about that. <clears throat> what has been so beautiful is that some people have been been able to connect the dots, connect the dots, and I can guarantee it's because of the the uh, the uh, structure of their adolescence. Okay, what they, you know, what they had to develop themselves through. Okay. Um, again, I, I, uh, I, and millions of us, possibly billions of us, we grew up um, in a stable household. And what do I mean by stable? Well, it allowed us the room to develop ourselves. Okay. Uh, my mom was a stay at home, so we always knew that she would be there, unless she had something to do, or if she was sick, or blah 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 blah, or she's in the hospital having more of us. Okay, so there was a stableness and a and a um, and a um, a structure of certainty. There was a structure of certainty in our household. I knew my mom would be there. Okay, and I knew eventually my dad would get there because my dad was working, you know, twelve sometimes sixteen hours to provide for us, you know, and take care of us. And there, and I told you there was a lot of us. And at the same time, my dad was being interfered, you know, by outside forces of people as well. Okay. And thankfully, I developed a relationship with my dad where he shared those things with me. Okay. So, and I developed a relationship with my mom. Once I, once I suspended my ego and took a chance, took a, not a chance, but took the opportunity to understand her. And she made complete sense, but it took a, it took a while. It took a while because um, 
when people are not getting their needs met, they start shed, shutting down and shutting down and shutting down. And so it makes it hard to communicate with them. It makes it so hard and difficult. And so that's why I was the last one to leave the house when we were growing up because I felt like something was wrong with her. Not wrong with her, but I, I, I felt like something was going on inside of her, deep within. Okay, the enemy within is the fool within. Okay, and so because she didn't know how to express herself properly, you know, it just took a lot of uh, it just took a lot of uh, compassion, empathy, and most importantly, love. Okay, so and once I want, you know, and that's why I said. So what's happening with me right now is nothing but joy and enthusiasm. My joy and, and my joy and enthusiasm is not going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, and anybody that is, um, you know, having certain fluctuation fluctuations in your disposition over an election okay just be kind and gentle with yourself and find out what is actually going on there it has nothing to do with the election okay so like i said i didn't want to listen to that music that i grew up on for a reason because i know what it conjures up in me it conjures up, um, you know, things I know, things I was taught, um, you know, you know what I sense and receive, you know, the uh, the natural elements of living. Okay, which comes with heartbreak, which comes with disappointment, what comes with di you know, and so I told you, thankfully. Um, you know, I was in a household of parents that they were, they were a con, a con you know, what's that term? They had contrasting styles. Is that what I'm looking for? You know, they were contrasting. Set in opposition to showing the different sense between. So there was a difference in both of them. Okay, they they were unlike, but they were alike. Okay, they were uh, able to coexist. I, I it, it look it still was difficult, but they were able to coexist with these contrasting styles of their personalities and be there for each other. And honor and commit to each other. And knew how to, you know, and, and model love for us. Even though there was chaos. Okay, I'm going to keep saying that. Because a lot of people think it's these white picket fences. So many people, not just black culture, but cultures in general, are going to be pissed when they realize they were puppets on a string. They were pawns. In a scheme, you know, they were they were literally, figuratively, and metaphorically in a pyramid scheme, Ponzi scheme. It's not just financial, by the way. So they were able to coexist in this small place <laughs> with all of us running around and still model love and gave. I mean, I had space to. To think and cultivate because I would used to go in our own backyard and do so, be in my fantasies, be in my imagination, and just kind of take it all in as best I can. You know, my mom created structure for us. She had, she you know, she had her demands on us. You know, because she was responsible for all of taking care of all of us. It was a lot of us, like I said. You know, at least you know. I mean, it started out as, you know. Me and my sister, and then, you know, before you know it, they were, uh, you know, it started out as two of us, me and my sister, and before you know it, it was a household of uh, eight. And then on top of that, you know, grandchildren and great-grandchildren and blah, 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 which my father uh, provided for all, by the way. So we had that structure and environment to 
to to to develop properly. Okay, I told you the, the essentials were there, which allowed that. Like I said, you know, we had my mom could go, my mom can walk to her doctor if she wanted to. You know, his house was right around the corner. You know, he 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 had a big house that took up a a, a large portion of a uh, of a um uh, corner lot. You know, I mean, you know, he it was a big house. Just put it that way. Okay, we had a hospital there, but suspiciously uh, was burnt to the ground. And, ha- and okay, that's the only hospital that I know of in recent history that I know of that was burnt down, a hospital. Okay, where all of us were born, all of our records were, and, of course, you know, nobody's going to admit all that was lost. Okay, and they, and they were just relying on the the, the, the uh, documentations that my uh, my mother's doctor had to to to, to you know to, to to and so that's where a lot of uh, mistakes were made with birth dates, you know when when you know I told you about the mix up with the birth date the birth dates of me and one of my siblings, you know and it wasn't discovered until we were in um, early um, elementary school. You know, I think I was somewhere from anywhere from 10 to 12 years old when I realized that. Okay. Now, the reason, again, like I said, I didn't want to listen to that music because I know what it will do to me. It will get me, you know. And the thing is, is that when it comes to knowledge, okay, Someone sitting in your face and, and and rambling from hours on end about stuff is that's not knowledge at all. Okay, knowledge is life experiences. Okay, which does not require degrees or doctorates or you know giving people keys to cities and giving these people what it, you know what we do you know the, the the activities of what we've done. And and it is so weird, and I hope, and I'm, I, and I know. Let's put it that way. I know certain people will have are picking up on stuff, and that's that is what gives me joy and enthusiasm. Even if if even, and I even said it, if it's just one, whew, I've succeeded. Okay. And I and and I also said I know who's listening, and it's not that I know who you are per se. I don't. They don't, you know, a lot of that stuff is hidden, by the way. You know, the people that are, who are actually listening, that's hidden, okay? And the people who are actually following, that's hidden as well, okay? And so a lot of people are relying on those kind of tables of, you know, to analyze things. I play along with it. You know, what am I supposed to do? Nobody wants to reinvent the wheel, so, okay, take it as what it is. But I know what, when I listen to that music, it, it um, you know, it, it, it's like a tap on the shoulder, Michelle, you know, Michelle, Michelle, you know, you know what's happening, you know what's happening. And sometimes, you know, the sadness of it all is, is sometimes a, it's just too much to bear, really. Um, because a lot of people are going to be experiencing devastation and catastrophic life experiences and they're gonna be, and they're gonna be questioning why, why me? Okay. And it's unfortunate because uh, I told you there's always a backstory to everything, always a backstory. And I, and thankfully, uh, I realized that I cannot take things at face value. That was the brilliant brilliancy of my mom as well, because my mom used to tell me all kind of stuff, and it was most of it was inaccurate. <laughs> At first, I just took it at face value, and I'm thinking, wait a second here. You know, because I, I took it at face value, but I still had to go research it. And, you know, and so when I started to research things and realize, okay, you know, I started recognizing things where something was going on with her. Okay, and that's, you know, I put a video out on that. I knew something was going on. And so that's why, I, that's probably why I stayed behind. Um 
you know, was the last person to leave the house uh, because I, you know, I felt like okay, something's going on here. But then I, but the, the thankfulness of it all is my dad was there, okay, and my brother, you know, my you know, my brothers were, you know, they weren't anywhere around because they were out and about, you know, stationed here, stationed there. They were military men, okay. But I knew something wasn't right. Was something was going on? But I also knew that I had to take accountability and responsibility for my life. Okay, I felt like I was behind the eight ball, you know, because all my other friends were doing this and that and the other, going here, going there, ba ba ba, getting married, this and that, you know. So I had to. I took that opportunity. I didn't miss it. I took it to leave when I did. Because if I had not, who knows, right? Because I knew my dad was there. And my dad was, the, the both of them were responsible for taking care of each other. Because that's, that is their vow. That's what they, you know, that's what they uh, came together on. That's why they married each other. And, the, and that's what they, you know, that, that was their commitment to each other. Okay? So when I moved out, that's when I got more and more, I started meditation when I was in, you know, still in my parents' house. And then once I got out on my own, I started meditating more. And I started to realize a lot of things that were not true. Not true at all. And so I made the effort to find out, okay, what is going on, really? Okay, what's going on? And so, again, when I um, cast my first vote uh, when I was 18 years old, I was just following in the footsteps of my dad. My dad was so, you know, he was advocacy of voting. He was an activist of voting, you know, in his, in his uh, disposition, you know, he believed that if he exercised his right to vote, then blah, 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 blah. Okay. My dad did not finish, uh, you know, he did not graduate from you know, a traditional um, education, thankfully. And my mom too, thankfully. Because my dad, like I said, my dad was brilliant because he relied on his life experiences to kind of figure things out without necessarily regurgitating what you were taught in school. You know, you had to learn the Pledge of Allegiance. You had to do this and that and the other. He, you know, he's, he was spared a lot of the uh, indoctrination. I mean, he was. He was, he was spared that. And um, so when I made it to 18, I realized, okay, you know, after I cast my vote, I cast my vote because my dad suggested I did. Okay, fine. 18, 19, first vote. Okay. I was immediately taken aback. Not at the results of it, but the process of it and the harassment, the intimidation of, of, of something that, you know, they say it's our right to vote, but, but it wasn't as though it were. It was, uh, it was like intentional harassment and targeting. You know, it was, it was an unpleasant experience for me, to be honest, and that's why I didn't participate anymore. I made my mind up. No, no, no. And then once the results came in, that's when the fear, I, I, you know, I actually felt some fear. I can remember that in my, I'm like, okay, something else is going on here. And so I, 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 I told myself, I'm not going to participate in this anymore. And I didn't until this recent election. And I told you why on that. So, I was thankful that I, quote unquote, trusted myself. Okay, and 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 during and during the course of all of that experience, those life experiences is how I understand what love is. You know, I I I, I used to ask that question all the time. What is love? What is love? What is love? And my parents modeled that physicalness of love, that intimacy of love between a man and a woman or the masculine and the feminine. You know, it could be a, a woman and a woman, a man and a man. I told you that. Or a man and a woman. 
that is not not necessarily the issues we're having by the way okay we have the masculine and the feminine the yin and the yang it can be in two women with two women two men a man or a woman and some people want to get into that multiple which i i don't participate in that i don't um condone it but i don't advocate for it and there's reasons for that as well so when i you know you know when i started developing myself as a young woman i realized something is not right when i would go to the libraries and and and, and read books and and, and and discovering stuff that i that, that was not taught in school and i know that you cannot teach everything in school it's about life's experiences actually and you have to take that opportunity to self educate yourself and so that's what i had to started to do when i was in my um middle 20s I, you know middle 20s i started self education self educating myself more i had been throughout but it became it, it was like um, looking for a missing treasure. You know, it was like a treasure hunt of what is really going on here. And so, I, you know, I, and and I started to p put the pieces together, and I realized that we are we are being fooled. We are being made a fool of. Okay. And so, one of the songs I'm going in this video because you know, I don't want to make them too long. One of the songs that stuck, that was in my head almost throughout my young years, I think once I graduated, let me see. I'm going to see when it was, um, you know, like I said, music was all through our house. And I, um, I gravitated towards a certain lyrics not not necessarily not okay I, I gravitated towards a certain uh late uh, title of a song and it called it's called it takes a fool to learn and the version of it that, that stayed in my head was by jean Carn. jean Carn. let me see if i if she's still alive They said that she's um, American R&B soul and jazz singer. So apparently she's still alive, right? So I gravitated towards her narrative of that, of that title, okay? My narrative is not her narrative, okay? That's her narrative. But I, gravi I gravitated towards it. You know, and, and throughout my young years, especially after I, after I graduated, that song, I think I may have played that song over and over, either in my head, and then once YouTube came along, oh boy, did I play it. It takes a fool to learn that love doesn't love nobody, right? The Spinners had their version of it. We all have our own narrative of things, but that title stuck with me throughout my, my young, I'm sorry, but these glasses on and on, it stuck with me throughout my developing you know, after I graduated from high school, you know, and became and 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 start becoming, okay, becoming who I am, what I am, and why I am. So that song stuck with me, and so I'm gonna come back on the um, on the next uh, video to explain what was really going on as to why that song stuck with me so much, and it still and it still is it still resonates with me today, okay. So I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to go ahead and send peace and love all over stars and moon and mountains. You know, I want to get this out. I want you to resonate with what I'm saying if you choose to. You know, it's all about you at the end of the day. So trust me, I will be back.